Hello and welcome back to another installment of the I Speak Electric series on the channel. And as you know, we take a topic in the world of EVs and make a short video explaining the ins and the outs. And today we're looking at EV connectors. Now, most of us that own an EV understand the connector on our own car, but maybe not others. And to those that are EV curious and coming into the world of EVs, dipping your toe in the market. Yes, it can be confusing when there's someone talking about different terms and connectors. So stay tuned and we'll explain all. My name is Martin. Lee, welcome to the channel. If you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Let's kick things off with the Humble Type 1 or J1772. It's the socket that my US viewers know so well. This type of connector is circular. It has five separate pins for delivering the AC current, the signaling and the earthing. Although still used in Europe by some older EVs like the Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi Outlander, that's a plug-in hybrid by the way, uh, mostly used in the US where it is the standard. Type 1, as with many chargers, can deliver varying amounts of power depending on the vehicle and the power supply. The Chevrolet Bolt, very popular in the US, can charge its 66 kilowatt hour battery at a rate of 7.2 kilowatts on a Type 1 connector. In Europe, the Nissan Leaf, depending on how you spec the car, is either 3.6 or 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Next up, we're heading to Europe, where the Type 2 or Menekes connector reigns supreme. Now, if you want more information on this type of charger, we made a whole video about it, so go check out our Menekes video. So the Menekes charger is the standard in Europe for AC charging. There are a few exceptions to this, notably older Nissan Leafs that we mentioned, uh, but in general, if you buy an EV or a plug-in hybrid in Europe, it will come with that Type 2 Menekes connector. Charging speeds on Type 2 vary a lot, actually. It's a very capable socket and connector, but in general, most modern EVs will take generally seven kilowatts when plugged into a home charger or standard destination charger at a supermarket. But more modern EVs are now upping their game, many being released now with 11 kilowatts of onboard charging. And again, that uses the Type 2 socket. And I have to say my trusty old Renault Zoe is king of the castle. It can take 22 kilowatts on AC power again through that trusty Type 2 connector. And that's about enough to give me 100 miles in an hour, so it's plenty when we go shopping. It's time to let go of slower AC charging now and move on to the world of fast DC charging. DC direct current will begin with the Chanamo connector. Once again, if you want some more detailed information on this, check out our full video we made a few months ago. Chanamo is most closely associated with Japan and its famous export the Nissan Leaf, although the Leaf was made in the US and the UK as well. Although the international influence of the Chatamo connector is starting to wane now. There are still a half a million Leafs on the road and they've got to charge somewhere. Traditionally, the Chatamo connector was capable of delivering 50 kilowatts of power and this matched up nicely with the limitations of older Nissan Leafs. But the Chatamo Association have a updated protocol. They can deliver up to 400 kilowatts of power, although it's going to be a while before we see any cars on the market <laughs> and even any chargers on the side of the road able to deliver that. And it has to be mentioned before we move on, V2G, vehicle to grid. You'll see V2H, vehicle to home, sometimes used. Any followers of this show uh, or my social media know that I love the idea of vehicle to grid. We just need to make it work. The Chatamo connection is already equipped to feed energy bi-directionally. Trials are ongoing around the world, have been for years on grid balancing and powering homes and offices from the car. It's just not widespread, but watch this space. Time to move on to the much more numerous connector, the CCS connector. CCS is Combined Charging System. In essence, what the CCS connector does is turn an AC charging connector into a fast DC one by adding two big DC pins beneath it. Let's look at the detail. We already discussed the Type 1 and Type 2 connectors. Both of those are slower AC connectors. 
With the Nissan Leaf, a whole extra space is added inside the charging flap for the Chatamo connection for faster DC charging. But in the case of CCS, we simply expand the existing Type 1 or Type 2 socket to accept the DC connector. And it's why EVs look different in the US to here in Europe. Exactly the same car, but lift the charge flap and well, the charging sockets look subtly different. Above, the AC pins get dropped and the two chunky pins below for DC get added. This combined system, depending on whether you are combining Type 1 with DC or Type 2 with DC, is why you see it called CCS Combo 1 or CCS Combo 2. I think we got that straight. Apart from some notable exceptions like the Nissan Leaf and indeed Tesla, modern EVs outside of China and Japan use CCS. Charging speeds vary, older EVs around 50 kilowatts, a notable exception being the new EVs that are coming out, charging really fast, but that's not always the case. The brand new Mazda MX-30 only charges at 37 kilowatts, so always check the specs, but the speeds are advancing rapidly. Little cars like the Peugeot E208 taking 100 kilowatts through the CCS connector, and cars like the Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron GT, Kia EV6 and Ioniq 5 from Hyundai will take in over 230, almost 300 kilowatts. That's hugely impressive. Plug those cars in at a motorway service station, pull off the highway and find a charger capable, and you'll be almost fully charged before you've had time to get a quick takeaway coffee. And now for the Tesla fans watching this, don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. We do know that Tesla has a proprietary network and a proprietary connector. Depending on where in the world you're based, though, there is a different connector. And at this point, it gets tricky. In China, Tesla added the Chinese connector. Well, we'll get on to that one in just a moment. In the US, they have the Tesla connector. Here in Europe, more and more, we're seeing Teslas with Type 2 and CCS connectors. They've been upgrading the charging stalls as well to cater for older S and X cars. Let's move on again, and we consider ourselves an international show. We're not making any exceptions in China. GBT, or Guobao, as it's known. Considering the size of the Chinese market, you can't underestimate the importance of this standard. Indeed, it is the world's most popular type of EV connector, but it's really only used in China. More and more Chinese EV makers are producing compelling EVs, but if they do sell them outside of their domestic market, we're pretty sure they won't come with that connector. They'll come with whatever is more popular in the country they're selling. And finally, let's cheat a little bit because wireless charging isn't really a connection. Well, it sort of is. We're going to be talking about inductive charging more in the future and wireless charging, a type of charging that we're seeing more frequently in the likes of mobile phones and smaller electronics, but huge progress being made in the world of EVs. In fact, it's as efficient as plugging in a cable. So the technology is improving and developments are being made with how efficient the transfer of power is. There are plenty of trials going on around the world, an exciting time in the charging industry. We're going to have to leave it there, folks. There's so much to go through. This is always meant to be an introductory series for those that want to learn about these things. We've not had a chance to cover everything, but hopefully you got a good grounding, pardon the pun, of various electrical connectors. It's amazing to see the main types of connectors out there uh, and how more people are understanding how it works with their EVs. It's a rapidly changing landscape. So now we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let us know about what you think is the best socket and connector. What's the best global standard that which could be used if we all use the same thing? And what about individual car makers using their own one like Tesla? Thanks for watching so much. Keep the conversation going below. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up so we know to make more just like it. And we'll see you on the next one.